I mean, Kaizen is like continuously improvement, right? right? So, but it's continuous, but there is a timeline for that. How right. how you try to put every thing yeah. get better in you know, the timeline? That comes down to how you train. I think I, you can speed it up. I, I think you can speed it yeah, up the yeah. process, and that's what we do here. That's why it comes down to how we challenge people. Some of it's a little bit coddled out here. It's a little bit too nice. Like, go play outside. Go play in the streets. Fall down, scrape your knee up a little bit. Scrape your elbows up a little bit. Get, get a little bit tough, you know? And that will, in turn, make you a better player and a better person and ready for those moments. Halo semuanya, ketemu lagi di Main Basket Podcast. Uh, hari ini istimewa kita kedatangan tamu yang luar biasa. Coach Dan Singleton, yeah. Coach, selamat, congratulations, appreciate you for the championship. Thank you so much. Uh, ini adalah gelar pertama yang diraih oleh Prawira tim Bandung sejak tahun 1998. It's been 25 years. 25 years. The series have been waiting for 25 years, and you bring the uh, chance. The chance. Yeah. Awards about that. Um, I'm just so you know, proud and I'm appreciative of being able to represent the city of Bandung, the organization. Uh, we wanted to do this since the day I got here two years ago. Uh, we always had a vision to win a championship. Last year, I felt like we were unlucky. Uh, and this year, uh, we brought back a lot of the same people, kept the continuity, kept the same system, yes. and uh, just raised the level of our training and, and our focus. And I feel like uh, this season, Uh, we had a lot of things where people could say, no, Puer doesn't have a chance. Puer is missing this player, missing this player. But uh, we believe, we continue to believe, and uh, being able to give those players that confidence that might not always uh, think that they can do something, I think that that was a big deal this year, the mental part of it. And uh, us being able to take the championship home was just something that I, uh, I'll never forget, and this city will never forget either. So it's a beautiful thing. Raise the level of the training for the 2023. Yeah. I thought 2020 was crazy. <laughs> And then you raise the level of training. Yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, you know, I think we understood that we needed to be more fit and more in shape. Uh, one of the things, like Pat Riley always says, he's said it forever, is like the most in shape players are the, are the players that you can always rely on and count on. And uh, I think that that was something that we felt like we got tired at the end of the year last year. Yeah and uh, we, we kind of fatigued out. And so I think that the most important thing was us for, to get in shape, uh, not only physically, but mentally, uh, being tougher minded. And I think that that's what you saw this year was a team that kind of changed the narrative of what they used to be and what they were. And I think now it's, uh, everybody understands that it's never going to be an easy game with us. And, uh, and I think we showed that. Yeah, I've been waiting to ask you this question. Uh, like for me, uh, I also say this in our Instagram, uh, you know, the best part of you as a coach for me personally, that you have that ability to bring out mm. uh, something that I think even the players, they didn't know that they had it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, like, you know, we see Firdan, Reza, last year or a couple of years ago yeah. they're like when we watch them like oh man come on you're not going nowhere but and then you take care of them yeah they completely change it mm -hmm. well how did you do yeah. that how do you do that i think it's a good point i think uh anytime you're working with some people you have to understand their limits right. you have to understand what they can take and i think uh you know me coming in i came in fired up i came in hot i came in you know, like myself. And I think that that shocked some people. Like, yes. wow, this guy, you know, he's very serious. Uh, he challenges us, he pushes us. And I think it takes time. I think everything takes time. And I think that first season, uh, I think it was the first time for people to really get a feel and comfortability with me and with my style and the way that things worked. And so I think uh, in year two, uh, the boys knew what to expect. There was continuity, there was chemistry, there was Uh, understanding, okay, this is what happened last year, and this is what needs to change this year. And, um, you know, I, like I always say, this is where I learned it as a young player, and my coaches is like, when people challenge me, I always want to rise to that. When people push me, I want to prove them wrong and prove that doubt wrong. And so I think, uh, you know, players like Reza, who have a lot of self-pride, Firdan, he's so smart. I think he'll be a coach in the future. Yeah, in like yeah. 10, 20 years, he's going to be 
amazing basketball yeah. coach. Uh, but these guys have pride and they have they have a little bit of ego. And uh, with that comes, you know, responsibility. And so I think that um, when you push that, you, you teach them, you show them, you challenge them um, in the right way, in the right way, uh, they respond. And I think that when you give them opportunities and confidence and belief, even when they make a mistake, uh, that 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 means a lot to them. And I think through this year, through the ups and the downs and through uh, their mistakes, that I, I let them know, like, look, mistakes happen. So what? How are you going to respond? How are you going to react to it? And that was always our mindset is just like next play, next thing, next opportunity yeah. Yeah. and take advantage of it. And um, and they really they really, you know, honed into that. They really made the team feel like, you know what, this coach here is challenging us for the right reasons, not the wrong reasons. It's not personal. It's not about I don't like you or something like this. It's about I see more inside of you and I want to get that out of you. And um and they allowed me to coach them, and I, and I really do appreciate that. And uh, I think that the mentality and their mindset kind of sort of came to what I do and how I am and what, what I believe in. And I think uh, you saw something really special and now kind of changing the turn and tune of their career right now, I think. How, how do you know that these players know that you're going somewhere? Because at the beginning, uh, Reza told me, uh, Yuda told me, like at the beginning they said, they don't know what exactly are you talking about. I'm like, is our coach crazy? We don't know. You know, <laughs> is there anything? Then, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, you know, there's a balance, right? You don't want to, like I said, you don't want to just kick somebody while they're down. Yeah. You want to, you want to help them up. When they're down, you want to help them up. So my thing is, I'm always honest. One thing I will say, like, is if I'm wrong, I'm gonna say I'm wrong. Okay. If I'm wrong about something at practice or I made a mistake, and I said, you know what, guys, that's on me too. Because it's not just me being right and it's my way, my way, my way. That's not how it works. You can't have any healthy relationships like that. And so uh, we do have uh, conversations. We do. We're honest and upfront with each other. And I think that they realize, you know what? This guy kind of knows what he's talking about when it comes to this and that. I would show them on video, right? The eye in the sky never lies. So you go on that video. You might not believe me on the court. You click on that video and I show you exactly what it was. You can't deny it. Some things are undeniable, right? And they understood why I'm saying what I'm saying. They understood uh, what it takes to, 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 to either be a, a runner up or a champion or a semifinalist or a champion. And they felt that after the last season, like, OK, this is why it wasn't enough. This is why it wasn't enough. So for me, I never want to go over that line, but I will tell that line to challenge them and say, you know what? This is what's needed to win. And now I have so much more. I guess, say and respect because we've won this championship now that they understand, like, you know what? This makes sense. You know, what this guy is doing makes a lot of sense and um, and we're much better for it, you know? Talking about, talking about you, you said that about Fury, then that's, that's, that's a little bit, I think, it's kind of like funny story with me with, uh, and him because in solo, I think in the November, yeah. we're talking about how you guys found uh, the backup for a Yuda. Because mm. you don't have Arif right. stuff, uh, right. and then I say to him, "How about Firdan? I try, but you can see a lot of turnovers. Mm -hmm. that, that was it. Yeah. A lot of turnovers. So there yeah. is a lot of work to do. Yep. And then I can see how big his impact in the finals. I mm. mean, you put the third ball hander on the game. So yep. PJ is like." Yeah, we we gotta stop. We gotta yeah, stop. Brandon, yeah. you die, and then there's Phil Right. All right. It's not. It's not executed, right? It's yeah. not really that type of guy that take a uh, ten, twelve shot. But right. that's that's what you want. <laughs> yeah, I want man. And you know what? It's a great point because uh, he's so smart that he's able to play all five positions. Huh. And Phil he started out here with me as a wing player. Yeah. That's what he started out as. Yeah. And I think naturally, even in college. He kind of played combo guard and things like that. But as we understood, like, the, the, what the team needed and us losing Brown, right. right, we had to understand that we needed somebody else to make plays. Yeah. Uh, we need somebody else that we could rely on to make plays. And Fyrdon, throughout the life of him, has been a star. He's got a, a big-time talent in high school, college. I mean, a legend in college. So we, that's what I mean by playmaker, right? When you have multiple playmakers on the floor – then all of a sudden you are more dangerous yeah. and more things are being able to be created for you. And 
Pure Nine is a hard worker. So one thing we did is when we watched the turnovers, like, can you control some of those? Some of those, you know what? Some of them are not as his control. Others are. The biggest thing with Pure Nine is he gets in his own way because he's thinking three steps ahead. Yeah. Always. If you see Pure Nine, his eyes are always looking here. He's, like, he's thinking of this. He's thinking of that. <laughs> He might call two plays in one possession. You're like, Fear down, slow down, slow down. <laughs> slow down. Okay. But he's like the mad scientist. Yes, right? yes, That's what yes. I call him. And the thing for him is um, he's a, so hard on himself that he always wants to get it right. And that's what I respect and love out of Fear down because he knows how good he is. These other players in the league that are big names, he's played against those guys. He's done it. He's, he's, he's beat those guys. He has the same accomplishments as those guys. He just got kind of derailed because of so many injuries. Yeah. Right? I mean, can you imagine if you're down without those injuries? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But the reality is he worked at it. He, every time he made mistakes and he turned the ball over, he went back to the video. He went back to the work on the court, working on his ball hand and working on his reads. And for him to step up the way he did uh, this season and, and be that, like you said, third playmaker, um, it meant the world to us. It really opened up our offense and it just showed the quality of Jordan Duncantara is like, you know, a real serious player in this country, you know. Right. And so, um, it's a credit to him and all the work that he's put in. I also want to know about. Uh, I mean, one of the biggest reason you guys pretty consistent for this all this season. Yeah. I mean, of course the foreign players, Yo, right? Of course, Brennan yes. really kicking for from the first time, right? <laughs> But we know Jay is coming late because mm -hmm. you got uh, another foreign before. Right. Right. Yeah, he's not coming back, but. How, 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 what, well, when you draft them, mm. when you pick them, mm. do you already imagine what you want to play? Of course. I mean, I think that's a, that's a kind of a... Or, sorry, or, or like this. You have this kind of local player yeah. and you need the puzzle and then you choose them or you, you know, uh, when you, you saw the list, oh, I can use them yeah. or something like that. We know, listen, at the end of the day, basketball is about putting the ball in the basket I and Last season, if you think about our team, we had Taj, who was 12 points a game, 12 rebounds, but he's not necessarily a natural scorer. Yeah. You had Chris Sterling, who was a shooter. Yeah. He wasn't a natural scorer, right? And so the reality is, I see the video of Brandon Francis and I go, whoa. Like, you know, like, we need a guy who said, you know what? Things are kind of messy. Give him the ball and let him go. Yeah. And that's how basketball is. Sometimes it's not that difficult. It's not, you don't have to yes, overthink yes, yes, it. Yes, 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 yes. You don't have to overthink the game. What I mean, everybody loves team game and ball movement and flow. And that's what we preach. And that's what we brought here. But just at the end of the day, look at the best players that ever play. LeBron, Kobe, Jordan. And play. Throw the ball to them. Get out of the way. <laughs> and that's what you do with Brandon Francis. Yeah. You're able to mix in the systematical plays and the offense and things like this. And then you're able to say, you know what? He's so darn good. Give him the ball and let everybody else play off of him. And that's what we did a lot of the time because how you don't stop it. Yeah. Right? Same thing with Jared Shaw. Jared Shaw came here from his last place scoring 20 plus points a game. He sacrificed. You know, oh. he played in the system. He was able to make a lot of beautiful passes and make a lot of plays. But at the end of the day, you can still throw Jared the ball and he can make a shot for you. And that's what we that's what we struggled last year in the playoffs. We couldn't give our imports the ball. And they go make a play and go score the ball on a consistent basis. That's no disrespect to them. But this season, it's like, you know what? You got to deal with the locals, with Yuta, Firdan, Reza, Hans, all these guys. And then you got to deal with dudes who can score at will. You know? And so that's that's where my, my mental thinking was, you know what? How are you going to stop us? Right? How, how, how can you guard this type of team? And that's why... We were the number one team in offense, offense. for the entire league, yeah. for the entire season, because it shows like there's too many options, there's yeah. too many threats on the floor, you know, and, and that was the thinking into it. So, yeah. What about the physicality of the, the team? I mean, like, yeah. uh, looking at Prawira this season, they were very strong. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, uh, as an offensive team, the best. But I also noticed that they're very strong. They also, uh, Overcome other, other other players. Yeah. How do you maintain that 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 strength, or do you have some kind of measurement that you need all of the players to be at this level for the strength, so you can like you see uh, Reza, he can oh, easily yeah. beat uh, who uh, Vincent. Yes. He can even stop uh, Dominic Sutton. Right. How do you how do you uh, create? How do you build those kind of strength? Do you coordinate? Do you discuss those kind of things with, with the uh, physical coach yes. yes yeah so that's 
I mean, that was, like I said, that was probably on the top of my list for this last offseason was right. improving the strength and conditioning program. Okay. And that's why we brought in a new coach, Bashir. Uh, he's coming from Norway. He has experience at University of Iowa. Uh, so he's done some time in the States and Europe. And um, we needed to get stronger, bigger, and faster. And that's what that's what he came in to do. And I felt like last year when we played SM in that series, we got pushed around yeah. all over the place. Yep. SM is one of the most physical teams, if not the most physical team. So is Pulika Jaya. And this season was all about building the legs, the upper body, the strength, um, the mind, like, as always. But we needed to be in better shape. Like, I watched us lose last year, and Brom and Yuta were tired. They come with me, I'm, I'm tired, Cody. You know, after the national team stuff. And, right. and even, like you said, Reza. I mean, Reza is not even half of the person that he is now because, you know what, he's in the gym, he's working out, we're pushing him in that area uh, just as hard as we push him on the court. Um, and so I think that that was a big factor in this playoffs is a great point. And then out throughout the season, to be honest, is nobody's going to push us around. Yeah. And that's a mentality thing, but that's also a physicality thing where we can hold our own and hold our ground against these type of teams and maybe push them back or actually be the bully at times. So um, that's what we wanted to build here was that mindset and obviously that, that body as well on the athlete um, to understand that, you know what? You know, we're never going to get pushed around out here. We're always going to be in shape. We're always going to be ready to go. And when that stuff is there, the system and all that stuff will take care of itself. You know? You would have played 40 minutes. <laughs> 40 minutes. For some, I... for not just the last game. I mean, yeah. for some games, you play yeah. 40 minutes. I think oh, yeah. he averaged like 36 minutes per yeah. game. Yeah, one of the highest in the league. Yeah, and yeah. I, I don't think he ever cramped. No. <laughs> no, I'm so I'm so I'm so lucky with that guy, man. He's like a machine, but I don't know how he does it. But uh, he's got like battery packs all in his yeah, back. I don't know what. He's, but you know, uh, that's the thing. Like, you got to know your players. You got to know how far you can push them and what they can what they can handle. Yeah. You know what they can handle. So I'm I'm really you know blessed and appreciative to have him. And uh, yeah, I think it's just a uh, uh, endurance type of thing. And it's a it's a it's a type of thing, and it's an in shape type of thing. And if you're not in shape, you don't have a chance to win a championship. Since you also mentioned about off season, how how's important is that for you? Yeah, off season. Uh, it's so important. I think uh, you know these seasons are longer than you really understand. I mean, you talk about preseason and then camp, and then into the local Close. tournament, right. and then into another camp, and then into the regular season. Um, and you don't have a lot of downtime outside of maybe the Ramadan break. Right. Um, but so you got to really focus on that. I mean, we're going to take time uh, here in, in this in this off season now, but we got to get right back to work because I mean, as as you guys know, and you know, people that you talk to, you take too too much time off, you lose it quick. You can lose shape quick. You can lose strength. You can yeah, lose yeah, yeah. rhythm and touch very quick. So, you know, these guys know what to do, but we're going to get back at it pretty fast. Uh, we're going to get back at it. We're going to make sure that they're working out at home. We're going to make sure that they're reporting to us and uh, making sure that they're running and lifting and stuff like that so uh, that they don't lose that rhythm and touch and flow because, you know, in, in any of these type of things, when you win, everybody's coming for you right. and they're coming harder for you and they nice. want to beat you more and, and all these type of things. So that's why you got to come back in even better shape than you were this past season and that's that's going to be our focus. Dave, one of our friends talking about, uh, just to see the, the bigger picture about uh, Pravira for this season. Mm -hmm. The off season, they have a good off season because uh, because of what? Because there is no many national team players. Right. Absolutely. Is that is that one of your advantage? It is, you know, and that's that's the tough part about uh, some of these teams like SM and PJ that they have to deal with is you know missing those players for that you know long periods and stretches of time, and then you got to bring them back in and try to start it all over again. It's just hard. <laughs> It's hard. So that's why you see. Uh, improvements from Bima Fukasa and Rands and some of these other yeah. teams because they don't have a lot of teams, guys that are on the camp and going over there. I mean, like I said, we had to deal with that in one of our <laughs> biggest playoffs hosted in Bandung when Brahm and Yuta were gone for four months. Yeah. Right? And then they tried to come back in the fold and we had one week of practice and it just wasn't there. You just could feel it. It just wasn't there. There was no chemistry and connectivity. And so I do understand that side of it. Um... I think we'll be losing one more player to the national team soon yeah. uh, in Reza. So I won't be necessarily too happy, but I'm happy for him. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but it is a factor, and I wish that, you know, it could be planned a little bit better where how, you know, getting downtime. Like right now, Yuta has to go to camp, but he's like, hey, I need at least a week, you know, and then he's got to get back into camp and get back into flow. So when does he get a break? 
you know, and I feel for those guys uh, not getting that time off and that time down. And um, So I hope that they can make an adjustment to it and figure out how the league schedule and the national team schedule can kind of run a little bit smoother and giving the guys a little bit more break on their legs and things like that. But um, it is it is an advantage, I believe, a little bit. Uh, yeah. For next season, um, do you already have the list of anything needs to improve for the upcoming season? I do. Uh, <laughs> Such as? Uh, well, we want to get we want to get another ball handler. We uh, believe that's that, what I was talk, uh, about yeah. to ask you. Then. We want to get another ball handler, a guy that can help out. We understand that Firdan obviously can do the job, but we don't want to put that much stress on him. I think Firdan is not only a good playmaker, but he's a good player off the ball as well, and opening other people up. So um, we want to get improve in that area yes. because if you look at teams like PJ and SM, they have three main ball handlers. Right. right? Yes. Erga, Hardiano, Sweetie, you know, Pras, Pras um, Yes, Yes, Josiah, Wiggins even. Like, yeah. they're getting players where there's multiple guys that can work and handle the ball. And so, uh, for me, uh, that's a priority. Right. That's a priority for us this season is to go out there and find a guy uh, that we can rely on to bring the ball up and give that man Yuta some time. to just a little bit of a relaxed time and we can not drop off and we can stay the same or go higher. And uh, the other areas probably will be another big man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you said you need to look for a better ball handler. Yes. Do you think? For me, I think uh, I'd, I'd agree that not many Indonesian players can can handle the ball very well. Mm. I mean, don't you think that it is better for you to create one or more than one, like um, bring some Fernando uh, probably? Fernando. I mean, like <laughs> that's for me in, in your. Uh, coach stuff. Yeah. In my eyes, maybe, maybe I'm. Uh, I think you need a skill coach. Mm -hmm. Because if you if you're looking for a great ball handler, it's kind of tough. But if you create that, you yeah. can create a lot oh, of yeah. ball handler. What do you think about that? I mean, you know what? I don't. I never. I never don't believe in what we could do as a staff. Yes. I've already. We've already. Elevated so many players, right. uh, yeah, yeah, blue diamond. you know their possibilities, their position, and, and what they've done. But the reality is, I think talent is talent. Talent is talent. So I mean, look, we can always create something and develop something, which we've been doing. But if somebody already has that, and you know they already have that, and you can enhance what they already have, right? Then all of a sudden that gets even crazier. So. I mean, no, don't get me wrong. We will continue to develop and build our players up in this organization, this program. But if there's a guy that's out there, it's like, you know what? It's undeniable what I could yeah. do with him and what I, how I can see what I can do with him. Then we're going to go after that. We're always going to improve. And like I said, no team stays the same. The Golden State Warriors win all these championships, but they never stayed the same. They got better. They go, they go, went out and went to free agency and got this guy and got this guy and got this guy. So... At the end of the day, you always have to improve your roster every single season. No team stays the same. And uh, we're going to do that, and we're going to uh, find the right piece for us and bring him in and develop him too. That's okay. what we'll do. Exactly. We actually, all, we, because it's too long, we we, we, just, we we plan for this one, right? We plan with the talk with Dave, yeah. but it's been held for so long. But we, we, are, we usually ask this for foreigners oh. since you came here very first time. Yep. Uh, not even... Not even Pacific, I think it's a heat. Yeah. What do you see? I mean, what surprised you from the Indonesian? I mean, there's a lot of there anything surprised you yeah, from like the player. Uh, yes. Yeah, but players. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll be honest. Coming from Vietnam, uh, wow. we 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 always relied so much, so heavily on the heritage, uh, right? The yeah. heritage players. So we would get the players from Houston, Texas, or California, yeah. or Boston. And we would bring them in and they would get citizenship and they would be, you know, it was kind of like Jawado. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not as good, but like Jawado. Yeah. And that's what we relied on. But when I got here, I'm like, you know what? These locals are just as good. I mean, a lot of them. And in Vietnam, they don't play basketball year round. That's also a, a kind of a, a road bump or a speed bump for them is because that they have to get back in shape. They have to get back in the rhythm. They have to get back in the flow. And here... It's a year-round deal, man. And these guys are focused. They're professional. They're taking care of their body. Not always eating right, but they could eat better, right? Uh, you know, that's that's an yeah. area of, of, of yeah. somewhere of improvement. But Please, some juice. 
Exactly. <laughs> like you know, <laughs> get some healthy foods in there. Um, it's part of culture, man. It's tough. Yeah, it is, exactly. Yeah. That's the tough part. That's yeah. the tough part. And the food is good. Yeah. yeah. Right? So, um, but the professionalism, um, how serious they are about it, how respectful they are about the process and the work. Um, and so that's something I noticed right away. And then just the level, the strength level, the condition level, which always could improve. But I, I really, I really thought it was a good deal. I thought it was a good thing. And I thought it was a step up from at least from where I came from, from a local standpoint. And um, from what I'm seeing now, or sorry, from Pacific until now, it continues to improve and it continues to get better. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see what it, what's going to happen. Yeah. Hey, your philosophy, Kaizen, right? Yes. Not mine, but stolen but philosophy. You, yeah, yeah yes, you like yes, it. Yes, yeah, you love it. Starting, that, it's, it's starting from, to know that from Toyota, Toyota way. <laughs> yeah, I read the book. I read the book, and Toyota he works for, uh, for a manufacturer yeah. company. Oh, wow. Yeah, yes. I was, I was before, before I'm doing this. I worked. It's an automotive the company. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for it's yeah. yes, for the supplier of Toyota. Nice. So I learned, I know that exactly when you came. Yeah, like, yeah. And I, I love Kaizen, Toyota way. Like, yeah. The book, Toyota way. I love yeah, yeah, yeah. that. See what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like, why, 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 why do you do you love it? So, yeah, like, uh, I think I told the story recently, but like in 2015, I got an opportunity to go to New Zealand right. and coach professional yes. there. And the coach there was uh, actually a childhood friend of ours Ooh. and my brother and their neighbor, next door neighbor's name yeah. Tim Fanning. I think you guys might know he coached four years at Maccabi Tel Aviv, Maccabi Tel Aviv. in the Euro League. And but before that, uh, we had a preseason camp and I kind of came in late. And I didn't really know what I was doing. My first time coaching professional, I was like, I'm just going to follow his lead. And um, he comes, he goes, everybody before practice, you go, okay, come in and watch this video. And it's a video of an old man, uh, maybe 70 plus years old, selling sushi, right? One of the most famous people in Japan. It's, it's a documentary, you guys have to look it up, called Hiro, uh, sorry, Gyro. And um, he started out talking about, you know, in the 1970s or whatever it was, I was in the subways of Japan uh, selling, you know, sushi. And basically, uh, the whole documentary, the basis of documentaries, my sushi was terrible back then. I was in my 20s. It was, nobody was buying it. And I was every every night, I would go back and say, why is nobody buying my sushi? And I would just keep perfecting it little by little, my sushi, right? How it looks, the, what I put in it, you know, the way it looks, the, the kind of the light that I put on it, whatever the case is, until... As 20, 30 years later, he's the most famous sushi chef in Japan uh, because he basically followed the Kaizen motto, which was step by step every day, just get a little bit better. He said he wanted to improve his, his sushi roll just a little bit better. And then by then, he's like this legend of sushi in Japan. Mm-hmm. And so that that documentary, I was just like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, <laughs> And even the guys, I mean, the guys were like, and I was just like. That's it, man. That's it right there. Yeah, at the end of that's the day, life. yes. That's life, man. You know? but, yeah. but you were you were taking the team, right? So yes. Team have the have expectation right. or something with a timetable about right. that. How right. how you? I mean, Kaizen is like continuously improvement, right. right? So, but it's continuous. But there is a timeline for that. How right. how you try to put every thing yeah. get better in you the know, timeline? That comes down to how you train. I think right. you can speed it up. I, I think you can speed yeah, up the yeah. process and that's what we do here. That's why it comes down to how we challenge people, what you, what you allow. Like I said, you are what you allow. I always tell people that because if you're okay with continuously making mistakes and continuously doing something wrong and continuously losing, then you're always going to be like that. But you are what you allow. So for me, like we're in practice. Practice is like a game. Practice is serious, man. We You making a mistake and, you, and I see you making that mistake over and over and over and I tell you about it and I show you why you did it and you're not fixing it. Well, we got a problem. We got a problem. So the boys and the culture and everybody knows that, look, I can't mess up too much here. (laughs) You know, I can't because first of all, coach is going to be on me. But second of all, the reality is we got people that can replace you fast. And that's what I mean by the competitive culture that you have to build is like, you know what? It's not just okay to, to, to mess up over and over. You can make a mistake. Don't get me wrong. But consecutively making mistakes after mistake after mistake without correction that's a problem and so for us we have a standard here of you know what you got to get it right and if you don't get it right that that time get it right the next time and um i think that that's what the boys kind of encompass was like you know what this is what it is we have a high quality high standards here and we don't allow mediocrity we don't allow that here and so that goes to your point of like speeding it up it's like 
you don't allow it. You don't allow, you know, mediocre. You don't allow it, and that's that's not what we've ever done here. So, yeah, yeah, I heard that already. I mean, yeah. someone someone said to me, some player said to me, how competitive you are. I mean, I mean, he's a coach. He's yeah. not a player. Yeah, but exactly. Right. But he's still competitive, like right. crazy. Exactly, man. You know, and I come off. I'll be honest. I come off crazy to people sometimes. I know yeah. that. I've gotten better. I'll be honest. <laughs> but but the reality is, you know what? Like. Everybody that's come through with me, I know, even if they don't necessarily like how I do it, they know that it works. All right. And that's the thing. That's the so point. sometimes some people that maybe not with me anymore, um, things like that, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, he yells, he's hard, things like that. But go look at what I'm doing. Are we getting it done or not? And that's why I told you after this game, the, the appreciation, the guys crying in my arms and things like that and telling me thank you for being on me and thank you for – pushing me and thank you for believing in me and all these type of things it's like there you go now you're raising up a trophy man now you're a champion yeah yeah because we pushed you you know and we we we, we, we demanded more from you so uh, you know i'm always going to do it this way um <laughs> i believe that this way works but some people don't some people have different ways of doing it this is just my way of doing it yeah, okay. yeah. it's been 30 minutes more than yeah This is man. great, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're it. just really talking like, yeah, chill. This is awesome, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is awesome. Hey, yeah. So for me, yeah, you, you, my, my friend here, uh, to be, to be yes. honest, yeah, he, he is. He have a uh, number one, one newspaper in Indonesia. Yeah, he's number one newspaper in Indonesia. Right. He, yeah. yeah, he want me to ask you about uh, the fact how you grow up. I mean, because he he kind of he kind of read the internet and kind of yeah. like. He's from Cali, but he's yeah. from Ohio. Or he's, <laughs> you said to me, uh, your mom in Chicago for two years. Yeah. I mean, Chicago Cubs. Yeah, and then, yeah. <laughs> and then every every time break you go to the Ital Italy. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what? It's a it's a what? pretty interesting life. Man. Yeah. Um, not to go too too much, right, yeah. but I, I would say like I grew up in a sports family. My father was a basketball player in college. Uh, my uncle was a professional basketball player for one year with the Lakers crazy uh Ooh. one year with Fenerbahce overseas and he blew his knee out um and kind of derailed his career um but that's kind of how we grew up just always in sports my dad is a sports crazy man my mother ran track in high school and things like that and so we were always around it my brother was a top 50 national recruit in baseball uh USA team USA in baseball he played eight years of minor league baseball one year of major league baseball Uh, with the Minnesota Twins and the Philadelphia Phillies. So, like, every year it was always either we're in football, basketball, or baseball. So, in the in the winter, it was oh, – I'm sorry, in the fall, in the fall, it was football. In winter, it was basketball. In spring, in summer, it was baseball. Don't bring it all. So, it was just like – since we were, like, five years old, it just But never for, stopped. For boys, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was. And so, yeah. like, we just – we were nonstop. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, that's kind of where our competitiveness came from and just us being active in sports and – always wanted to win yeah, my dad yeah, was yeah. always on us about winning and doing the right things i mean when i was maybe nine or eight years old he was teaching me weak side defense <laughs> and how to take charges and you know, all this stuff i'm like outside of the park we're like we're learning weak side defense outside of the park you know concrete you know he's like no you got to be in help i'm like i'm eight <laughs> years old man so you know at that time it was just like I knew that this was my life. You okay, know, this yeah. was going to be my life and we're going to be in the sports and uh, just be in that world. And I think him forcing me and my brother to play up. So once we hit eight years old, we never played at our same level. We always played at 10. Eight, we were played 10U. We were eight years old. 12U at 10U. So once we got to that point where we were playing our age group, we were always some of the best players in, in our city, our region, in California. And that's kind of why we were so successful. My brother was able to play professional baseball. Yeah, yeah. I was able to excel in college um, and then now doing coaching. And he was a coach. So, like, I knew I was going to be a coach. My dad was always a coach, <laughs> always on us, so hard. But I understand why now. Yeah, yeah. You know, I understand why. Uh, what do you think is the most beautiful thing about basketball? Yeah. Um, I think it's opportunity for – It's almost like football, like a soccer. It's like where the ball changes hands so much. And it's able to you see these patterns and this movement of people going all, all up and down and side to side and jumping and all these type of things. I just think the chemistry and the, and the, and the teamwork uh, part aspect of it is such a beautiful thing. You know, I mean, sometimes one person can win a game, but it's not always like that. 
You know, I feel like it's, uh, you know, you got this round ball and you're moving it all over the place and people's heads are going back and forth <laughs> and watching it and, and it's up and down and it's exciting and people are falling on the floor and there's drama and I just, I just love everything about it, uh, the competitive side of it. Um, it's just, it's just a beautiful game and I've fell in love with it since I was a young kid and it's the best. It's the best, man. Last yeah. and leave least for me, for me. You have anything to say for some youth, especially those who wants to be a basketball player? Yeah, I think uh, for anybody anybody that's coming up is is definitely important to uh, you know focus in on the skills, the skills of the game. So like ball handling, um, being able to not just do the cone drills and the static dribbling, but having contact, having people get up on you, having pressure. I think developing point guards in this country is such an important thing um there's so many good wings and shooters but the point guard position is a position that's lacking in this country and i think that the way we grew up when we grew up in the streets and we were, grew up trying to cross people over and beat people and challenge and guys talking mess to you and all that type of stuff and it it made us harder it made us tougher it made us comfortable with those situations where there's pressure and there's things like that and i think That's a big position that has to be developed here. Um, I think also just the work effort, the time that you put in, I think that that's a big part is just putting in the time that you want to be better. Like for me, it's a different age, but when I was going to school and catching the bus or walking to school, I'd have a basketball. Yeah. You can ask anybody. Yeah. I'd be in school, I'd get in trouble by my teachers. David, put that ball up. I'm dribbling <laughs> in the hallways. I'm dribbling, huh? I got it in class like this. I'm in class, it's next to me and see me. You know, then all of a sudden at lunch, you know what we're doing. We're going to play basketball with the boys. And then after school, we're going to play basketball. You know, so it was nonstop. And that's what I mean. Like, some of it's a little bit coddled out here. It's a little bit too nice. Like, go play outside. Go play in the streets. Fall down. Scrape your knee up a little bit. Scrape your elbows up a little bit. Get get a little bit tough, you know. And that will, in turn, make you a better player and a better person and ready for those moments. Because everything isn't just about a skill trainer. You can't learn it like that. Yeah, you yeah. got to learn by playing. Right. You got to learn by competing and going against your boys and going against older kids and stuff like that. Yes. And I think that that's a big part of it is, um, is I love the skill trainers. I respect it. But you got to go out there and do it outside yeah. in the streets and, and on, and on your own time. Yeah, yeah. On your own time and, and, and putting that work in. So that's what I would say. Um, and I think the game is trending the right way, though, for sure, out here. And I, I see yeah, the right. kids. And the culture is really loving basketball more. Okay. So I see that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Enough yeah. for me. Just want to say congrats okay. for the Thank chance. Thank you, man. I mean, uh, you bring um, more excitement for us uh, in, in the basketball in Indonesia. For sure. Uh, I mean, congrats for it because it, you waited for that long. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I did. And it, the definition of trust the process. The definition, and, right? And I mean, like, the change of his kind of like what we see him in the in the court. I mean, First, he play like uh, just wild with uh, Pacific. I mean, fast, yeah, fast, 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 and then playing a lot of defense with uh, Bima Prakasa, yeah. and then now he play. I mean, offense like crazy, <laughs> like <laughs> crazy. I mean, yeah. I just I, every every time we talk about Prawira in, in our podcast, I was talking like pick your poison. Yeah, what you want to do with that pick and roll? Just simple pick and right. roll. What you want to do? Right. Want to hedge? You gotta. Prepare for that. Right. <laughs> prepare for that three. Prepare for that cut. Yep. And you don't want to stop him like the Prita Jay did. <laughs> you don't. You don't do anything about Yuda and uh, Brandon every pick and roll. So you got that. Yeah. yeah. So just thanks, man. I appreciate Congrats. it. Man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Finally. Thank you, man. Thank you. Hope Thank you, guys. We'll talk again oh, here next year. Right. Yeah. Oh no. Hopefully. I love it, man. I want to come back, man. I, I yeah. always watch you guys too. I always respected your work, like I said, and yeah, yeah. I was like, man, I got to get on one of their shows one time. Yeah. 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 So. I, I appreciate it and uh, I hope I can be back. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much Thank coach Dev Thank you guys. Thank you. Oke okay, teman-teman itu dia obrolan kita dengan uh, kepala pelatih Prawira Harum Bandung. Sampai jumpa.